I want to do this video because Mosaic just came out with a new MDF door module that's going to blow you away when you see how easy it is to do this. And I wanted to show off our Shop Saber IS510 because I think you'll find this is the best value on a cabinet machine in the world. Now let me show you why that's so. People don't realize this, but MDF door production is one of the most demanding operations we do on a CNC router. And here's why. To create that look that looks like a real door, we've got three different tool paths that are blended together. And by blended, they basically all overlap and they're at the same depth. So if there's any discrepancy at all, you see a, a line. Not only does it have to be perfect here, it has to be perfect all over the machine. And that's why a machine like an IS is required to really do that efficiently. It starts with the frame. First off, we use structural steel. It's all welded. Everything's machined in one setup. So the frame itself starts with the accuracy of the machine tool that we make the frame on, and that's aerospace quality. The next part of the frame system is actually the gantry, and we use a, an all-welded solid steel gantry, and it's supported by gantry supports that are also all-welded structural steel. So that's the other component of the frame. Those two components, the gantry structure and the base frame, create the edge finishes and the accuracy. Machine motion is the next part of accuracy, and let's take a look at how we accomplish that on this machine. Precision contour guide rails are used in all the axes, and precision ball screws are used in all the axis. And you say, well, what, what do those have to do with each other? Well, the common technology there is the ball bearing. And we use that because those systems don't have any play. Well, play is a problem when you're doing MDF doors because it can show up in, in a bad door somewhere on the table. So we put those two together. We don't really have a choice because these are machine tool grade CNC routers. But sometimes companies will actually, to cut costs, will put a rack and pinion in there. Well, they're injecting play back into it. We just can't do that. Now, what makes all this actually function is a software we call finite element analysis. That tells us where the spacing on all these components go so that we get the maximum rigidity. And that's really why these edge finishers are so good on these machines. Now, let's take a look at the people part of this process, and that's machine control, and that's the role of the machine operator. There's actually two parts of machine control. One is an electromechanical part, one's a people part. Let's look at the electromechanical part first. We use Mitsubishi AC closed loop digital servos to actually generate the motion. And we do that because Mitsubishi is a rock solid company and it's great technology and the servos are really powerful. That really lets you take advantage of the frame you have and the power you have in the spindle. But there's a people part of it. When we designed this control, our goal was to create a user experience that a worker that comes to work every day could, could master. We didn't want to create an engineering position in your company. Let me show you how easy this is for your operator. We tried to create a control interface that would be really easy for your operator. And here's how we accomplished that. First, we put pretty much all the things that you use every day to run the machine on a single screen. And then we grouped them logically. So if, if you look up here, these are actually motion buttons. So if I, if I hit that, that jogs it around. And you can see down here, this corresponds to the machine table itself. There's where the spindle is. You can move into all the axis that way. There's also keyboard shortcuts for that. There's Z. And I can move it slow, medium, and fast. Or I can actually come down here and move it incrementally. So it's a certain amount each time I click the key. What we typically use that for is, is when we're precisely setting things up. And now I can move it a thousandth of an inch at a time in any axis. Uh, the key group down here are basically things we do on a daily basis. We home the machine, we touch tools off, we basically set zeros, we turn the spindle on and off manually sometimes, even though it's normally done automatically in the program, or we may want to manually raise or lower the pins, and we actually put a warm-up button. What that's used for is to start your spindle and let it warm up early in the day, and, and normally that gets the bearings to operating temperature before we put loads on it. It really makes your spindle last longer. This area up here corresponds to positions or coordinates, and so as, as you see when I move the machine around, you see those change. So that basically tells us that. Now you'll see a couple slides here, and here's what those are used for. Uh, you may be running something and you say, well, you know, that would it doesn't sound right, maybe I need to slow it down or speed it up. That's what these do. This lets you speed the spindle RPMs up or down while the machine's running, and same thing on feed rates. So that makes it really nice to, to really sometimes dial in cutting uh, conditions. Now, let's take a look at what has to happen now for your operator to run a program. The operator comes over here, opens file, 
clicks on the program that you're going to run. Then I hit this button and it views it. Now, now I see on the screen exactly what the machine's going to produce. It's a great way to make sure that you loaded the program you thought you loaded. Then all I have to do is hit the green button and it executes. And you see on the screen what's exactly happening. So as the machine executes the program on the table, you see it on the screen. That's all that you really have to do. So we really try to create something that, that you really didn't have to have that sophisticated a machine controller to be successful. Now, let's take a look at the spindle on the machine. I've been most impressed at ShopSaber by our engineering capability, and the tool plate setup really showcases that. Let me show you. Start out, this has an HSD 10 horse spindle, and it's an ATC spindle, and we use that because number one, the machine's got a lot of power and can use 10 horsepower, and it lets us use heavier cutters. Now, what's really neat about that, though, is this is all part of what we call Super Z technology, and here's what it does. It basically increases your travel, so if a part fits underneath there, you can machine it. All right, it also, and we do that with these stiffeners, and we also put in a balancing cylinder that does a couple of things. One is it takes the weight off the ball nut, but here's what that really does. It allows us to crank up the acceleration in the Z-axis, and it makes 3D machines a whole lot faster than most of our competitors. Now, this machine also has a boring block, and here's why. We're not gonna use it in this demo today, but the machine's spec specified to do cabinets and closets. When you're doing closets, the boring block makes sense. Now, let me show you one of our newest developments that I think is gonna revolutionize this industry. I've been in the CNC router industry for at least 25 years, and I can't remember ever seeing a machine in woodworking that picked up dust very well. And it doesn't matter how big a dust collector you put on there, there seems to be lots of stuff, especially when you get to the edges. The dust dock is gonna change that, and you'll see it. We're running MDF doors, which produce a lot of dust. It picks it all up. It's really revolutionary. Now, let's look at the final part of this, and that's how are we gonna hold the parts to the machine? This machine is an IS-510, which means the table size is five feet by 10 feet. But if you actually measure it, it's about an extra foot in width. Now we do that because we put extra travel on here. So if you wanna put a boring block, you've got full table coverage on all the heads. But there's another benefit to this. We also machine the table with the router spindle itself. It's a huge impact for doing that. Number one, it makes that plane line up perfectly with the machine frame. Here's what that means. That means when you put a spoil board on here, you don't have to have gasketing. It doesn't require gasketing. Now, if you look at also how we machine this, we create a special design for this so that we really get more vacuum to the part because of that. And that corresponds also to the porting that we do on the table. We use lots of ports and they're large and they're all solid pipe. So we don't get that loss that you get with flexible hoses. Those connect to an actual a vacuum plenum, which is a frame component with valves, and then there's a large tube that goes to the back. That's why these tables work so well. Now, this machine also has part locator pins. We put those in there because it makes it easier for your operator to load and unload the machine. At the end of the day, you're gonna have more parts. And this machine has our T-slot feature, which tells me they wanna do special setups and they wanna clamp some fixtures down on the table. Now, let's go take a look at Mosaic's latest development in MDF door software. I've always been fascinated in making MDF doors on a CNC router. Let me explain to you what this whole technology is. About 20 years ago, about the same time we started nested base manufacturing and we had the ability then to lay a sheet of material on a router and cut all cabinet parts out, it made sense to also cut door parts out. All right, well, so that's where this came from. Well, what were we trying to duplicate? We were trying to duplicate that look of a raised panel door. About that time, white cabinets were really, really popular. So if the cabinets were gonna be white, we would just make them out of MDF, the doors would look the same. Well, frame and panel construction is hundreds of years old, and it was developed for a reason. When you take solid wood glued up panels, they expand and contract during the seasons from the driest time of the year to the wettest. Uh, in fact, in a rule of thumb is for every foot of width, they can change about an eighth of an inch. So a two foot cabinet panel might change in size a quarter inch. Well, th that panel in length changes negligibly. So you, can, you end up with a whole lot of stresses in a cabinet. So they figured out we could take a frame and cut a groove in it and take a panel and float it in that groove and leave enough space for it to expand and contract. 
and it kept them from splitting apart and it made the outside dimensionally stable. That's where framing panel structures came from. Then that was developed into doors and we had moldings and stuff like that. So it's that door look that we're trying to duplicate in MDF. So that's where this all came from. Now, a couple other things had to happen. We had to create tool sets that would actually produce that look. So when you're done, it looks just like you were, had a solid raised panel door. We also had to develop some MDF material that when you cut down into it, remain smooth, not fuzzy like the stuff we make spool boards out of. So that was developed and finally it took software. And the same software companies that were developing the cabinet software also developed the software to generate MDF doors. You know, you look forward to today and they're just as popular as they ever were. 20 years ago, CNC routers that would cut cabinet nests out cost as much as a house. And it wasn't uncommon for, for a, a router owner to spend twenty to $25,000 up front for the cabinet software, and that didn't include annual support. But that seemed to work. Well, you step 20 years forward, and a Shop Saber IS is about the price of a pickup truck. Well, all of a sudden, $25,000 for software doesn't fly. All right? A few years ago, Mosaic software was created with a new business model, and that was a subscription-based software. So instead of a bunch of money up front, you paid a, a monthly payment. And that included all the modules, that included support, everything. And, it, and that really worked really well because of the price of routers. Now, one of the things that's nice about that is that software evolved, all those new developments were included. That brings us to today. Mosaic just introduced a new package for MDF doors. In other words, what they did was they improved on what they had. We've always had a problem with MDF doors and being a bit cumbersome to set the tools up. Well, this new version of Mosaic has solved that problem. And I, what I wanted to do with this video was to take a clean install of Mosaic. I'm going to run everything as it's installed. When there's something I've changed, I will tell you. And when we're finished, we're going to take this product and we're going to go out on the CNC router and we're going to cut it out. I've opened up Mosaic and let's take a look at the, at the door catalog to start with. So we'll go to library and we'll go to doors and here it is. And, and all this is, this is from the default install with the exception. I created these three doors right here and we'll get back to those later. All this other stuff was included and the ones that say MDF then are actually what we're looking for. So we can, we can hit this tab that says routed, routed are the MDF doors. And let's see what we've got here. Let's pick one a uh, traditional arched. It's really common. You see it all the time. On a cabinet, that's what it looks like. And you may say, holy cow, where did that come from? Well, first off, this is actually created by a tool set from Vortex. And once again, this is, this is already this installed by default. It's the one I prefer because it's got that look of a traditional raised panel door. It's got a little bead on the edge here and a nice raised panel. Okay, This line that you see here represents that inside edge. So when, what you're really seeing on that line is you're seeing that edge right there, just as though it were a real door. Okay, now you say, well, where did those profiles come from? Well, if we go to settings, we go down here and it says routed door tools. These are actually tool groups. These two are from Vortex. And then this is one from Royce. These are already set up in the software. So all I have to do is select it here. There's actually two versions of the Vortex one. One of them has a quarter inch bead, one has uh, three eighths. This is the one we have. And so when I close that, when I show this in 3D, that's what determines what that looks like. Well, just to give you an example, let's go back and let's switch to, the Royce one's real complicated. So let's select that one and we'll take a look at it. And you see, that's what it looks like. So there's more cutters and there's more pass, but, but at this point, we'll just accept that those are set up and we can use them. And when we get in the CNC part, I'll explain how, what each tool does and how that works. Okay, so I'm going to go back to um, the tool set I prefer. That's this one. And we also have edge groups. So you can also have an edge group. If I want to apply an edge to a tool, I've also got a choice of doing that. Once again, we'll get into that later. In this case, I'm not interested in putting an edge on there yet. So we'll just cut the outside of the door with a cutout tool. Okay, so that's how these doors are made. So that's basically the door catalog. Now. If I'm just doing a kitchen cabinet, I basically, in settings, 
tell it which door I want to use and that gets applied automatically. So under settings, I would just select the door, MDF, and that gets applied by default into the, the actual cabinet itself. Now let's take a look at a cabinet. Now I've actually created just a simple base cabinet in order entry, so we'll go take a look at that. And we'll hit edit, and we'll switch over to 3D. So here's what it looks like. So here's a base cabinet, there's our default door that it put on there automatically. Okay, now I can actually, I can actually control the doors on the job at the settings level in the job, or I can do it at the cabinet level. I can actually come over here, go to face, click on that, hit overrides, and then that brings up uh, the door catalog. And I can come over here and say, okay, I'm going to use, uh, see what we got up here. There's a square one, that looks good. All right, and we'll hit OK. If we look at that in 3D, so at the cabinet level, I can pick whatever door I want, and I've, I can even edit that if I wanted to, all right? So that makes a lot of sense, all right? Now, let's go back and, and let's do something else. Let's say, you know, on this one, I, I'd really like to have a really nice rounded edge, so let's just do that. So we'll come over here, we'll go to overrides, and let's go, actually, I like that other door better. Let's go back to that. We'll pick the arch door. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do now, instead of use the cutout tool, which is a 3 8 bit normally, I'm gonna actually select one of those edge sets. I like that one. And now that puts that on there. And now let's take a look at it. And now you see now our cabinet door has, has that uh, edge tool set. So it's really powerful and it's amazingly easy to use. So, so that's basically how the door catalog interacts with the job. But that's not really what I want to make. I don't want to make a bunch of little simple cabinet doors. I want to make something a little more unique. So I got this idea that I would make an island based on some Wayne's coating I designed. So let's take a look at that. This is a job I created called Island Video. Let's take a look at it. First off, let's go to the door library and I'll show you some things I made. If you remember I told you there's some of these that I, that I added and here's the case. First I created, let's look at, I, I wanted a back panel for my island and that's what it's gonna look like. Let's look at that 3D. So I've got an island in the back of the island instead of having a cabinet back, it's gonna be that. And once again, I designed this to go along with the wainscoting that's in the room. I also created another panel for the island ends, for the end panels. Here's what they look like. And one that I was going to use for doors. You don't have to do that, but it, to me it just made more sense to do that. So I created those. So I basically designed those panels right here in a door catalog, and it, it's really simple. Okay, now let's close that. Now this particular one, I actually put it in a room. So let's take a look at that. There's that cabinet sitting in a room. And we'll put, fill it up here. So that's what it looks like in space. So you can see the back panel, you can see the two end panels, and you can see the doors. All right, let's look at that a little closer. Let's go to the product, and we'll go edit. So I double click this. That brings up the editor, and uh, let's take a look at this. First, let's go back and look at it in 3D. Here's what we've got, there's our cabinet. Nothing exotic, these are three doors right here, so that opens up, and then these are just panels. Okay, if I go to shape, I can actually right click on her, select it, and, and say, okay, what's that gonna be? Well, it could be an applied door. Let me show you the difference. If you put an applied door on there, that works fine. And I can apply that same door, but you see what it's done is it's put an unfinished end on there first. I don't really have to do that. That's really an extra part. So what I prefer to do is make that actually a panelized end. And we'll take a look at it. You don't have to do it that way. You can make it applied doors if you like. It just takes more material. So that's how I did both of these on the, on the ends. And the same thing on the back. When you go to the back here, whoops, go to the back, and that one I made a panelized back. And when we, actually when you do that, the section tool comes up and I can actually change it right there if I want to. You, you section a cabinet door just like you section a, a cabinet itself. 
All right, so that's where all that came from. And then let's take a look at that. And when we put it on here, that's what it looks like. So that's how I created it. So I wanted to do something a little bit more unusual. This almost a cross between wainscoting and cabinet doors. And, and this door system has so much power, it's, it's really easy to do that. All right, now, now we're ready to start thinking about how are we going to make this on the machine. So let's take a look at that. Let's go to the cut list, and that leads us to the optimization. So that gets us to the optimizer. So we click this. We're going to optimize 3 quarter inch MDF. That's what I made the doors out of. And we'll expand that out. And there's, our, there's all our parts. And let's optimize it. And there they are. Now, let's talk about material a little bit. One of the things I always ask people uh, if they're buying a machine or specking a CNC router out to do cabinets is I always ask them, are you going to do MDF doors? And here's why I ask that. MDF doors, because of the sizes of doors and drawer fronts, typically nest better in five foot wide material than four. It's not so much the length, it's the width. And it's just, it's just something that's unique about MDF doors. So in our case, I've got five foot wide material here. And that, we're going to be running this on a five foot wide machine. So that's what it looks like. And, and there's all the parts on the table. Now, um, before we do anything else, now let's start talking about CNC tooling. This is a tool set from our friends over at Vortex Tool. This is probably my favorite tool set for MDF doors. It starts out with, with the, these are four tools, and these are actually insert tools. Now here's what that means. There's a tool body, and you just have to replace the inserts when they get dull. So it's a real economical way to do this. And keep in mind they have three quarter inch shanks, so you'll need to get three quarter inch collets with this set if you get it. The first tool it creates what we call a panel, so it's it's a first machine that we do. Then we follow up with a bead, and between those two, it starts to look like that raised panel. Then the third cutter is a bead cleaning tool, and it's used twice at the top and the bottom of the bead, and that's where we get the sharp square corners. And then the fourth tool we're not using today, this is actually for the outside of the door. And in my case, I wanted the outside uh, straight, so we're using a straight bit. All right, so that's, that's the Vortex tool set. Now, these tools are, are already by default entered into Mosaic. Let me show you where that's at. Now, let's see how these tools are actually fit into the software. So I'll go to Libraries, CNC Tooling, and we'll expand this out. And you'll see first a tab that says Tool Property. These are all the default tools that were installed when I installed the software. And you see all these door tools are in there. In fact, there's a couple of different brands. All right. Now, for instance, this one, this is the panel tool right here. And here's the feeds and speeds. Now, one of the things that I did on this is I wanted to stay as stock as possible to the installation. So I used the default feed rates. Now, the ShopSaber IS is a really powerful machine, and it's, and it's got a big spindle on it. You can cut much, much faster than this, but once again, I want it to stay as, as stock as possible. All right. Now, here's something that's neat. You say, well, how in the world does a software know that tool shape? It's right here. Here's a drawing of it. There's actually a drawing of what the tool looks like. So, but that was entered automatically. If you had a custom tool, for instance, that you wanted to use, that's where you would create it. If you look at that in 3D, that's what the tool looks like. Okay, so let's close that. Now as we move down here, you'll see a tab that says Panel Tool Groups. And these are the default ones that are already installed. This is the one we actually use. This is my favorite one. This is a Vortex, and it's got a cove and, and a 3 8 bead. This is what it looks like. Now this line that you see right here is that line that we had on the drawing uh, when we saw a shape inside the panel, that's that line. So what we're doing is we're trying to line that up. In reality, that's really on a real raised panel door, that's the inside of the style. Okay, here's the first tool that's going to be used, that's the panel tool. And then we're going to cut with the bead tool. And we're going to cut the bead clean tool. Now here's what, you know, one of the things that, that's really difficult about making MDF doors and, and the machine itself is, if you notice, those three tools are exactly the same depth. If they're off at all, you see a line in there. And that's one of the reasons that a real accurate machine is required, and that's where ball screw technology really comes in because of that setup right there. Then that bead clean tool is ran again, and those two tool paths actually create both uh, 
they create both of the that sharp corners, okay? Now, there's another similar, oh, before we leave that, let me show you something that's really neat. If you wanna know what the panel's gonna look like, check this out. That's what it looks like. In fact, let's look at, let's look at the Royce one. It's, it's, it's got more detail, let's look at that one. We'll go to 3D. Look at that. So you can see it's a much more complicated tool set. And if we actually look at the tools, there's more operations. There's a down shear bit, another one, or those are actually the same bit as two passes. There's a raised panel bit. So you can have some really complicated setups. In our case, you know, we're using this set right here. Now you notice there's another group up here that says edge tool groups. And once again, let's take a look at that. And, and that's what that looks like. That's what creates that edge. Now in our case, we're not using it because I really wanted straight edges, but that's how that works. So those tool groups get applied to geometry. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let's go back over here and we'll, one of the things we didn't look at are tool sets. Now, uh, this tool set I created. Okay, and here's what I did. This is basically what tells me where to put the tools in the machine. Tool number one is gonna be the panel tool. Tool number two is the large bead. Tool number three is the large bead clean. And tool number four is a compression. So that's what makes this fit the way I have my machine set up. So I created that just to make it easy. Now we've looked at the tools. Let's go back out and we're ready to actually generate tool paths and generate code. Now that you understand how all the tools fit in to the design, let's actually create tool paths. So I hit generate G-code. This pops up. This is my tool set, Vortex Doors. There's the post processor I'm using. I hit calculate. Now here's something neat. Okay, the first thing that's gonna happen, that's the first tool, that's the panel tool. And then there's the bead tool. And then if you notice the bead clean tool is used twice. And then we have finally the cutout tool. So all I have to do is hit G code. It'll create it. I'll overwrite that. And there's a program to create that. Now I'm gonna send this out to the machine control through the network. And let's go out and run this program and see what our doors look like.
our MDF door project came out really, really good. You know, this is an application where you really see an advantage because of ball screws. And our Super Z technology also has to do with how good these finishes are. One thing that amazed me because of the dust dock and the way it works, there was very little cleanup when we got finished. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.